Guys, I almost canceled the show today because uh, I just thought there's nothing for us to talk about. I mean, what? I can't think of anything that's going on in the news today. I, I don't know, like, what's happening? What's, I mean, what a slow news day, right? Is there anything going on? <laughs> Bernie announced. Bernie announced. We knew it was going to happen. Uh, Bernie announced. They're already they're already smearing him. Uh, they are already smearing him. But let's just dive into it. And of course, we're going to have to have some election talk today. Uh, we had some election talk yesterday. We were kind of talking about optics um, and the whole Tulsi uh, Tulsi Prez v- Bernie VP versus Bernie Prez Tulsi VP. Um, it's an interesting conversation to have. There's best cases on both sides. Um, but I mean, I will say this on the short uh, on the short term. I think the sooner they team up, the better. I do feel that way. And uh, you know, like I said, I uh, I do think Tulsi Prez Bernie VP would be a little better uh, optics wise. Um, but either way, I'm fine with that. You know, obviously, if it's if it's the other way around, if it's Bernie Prez Tulsi VP. That's fine too. I mean, like I'm totally, I support it either way. Um, so anyway, let's dive into this, guys, because Bernie announced today, and we're going to talk about it. And uh, there's a lot to talk about. So here is an initial article that happened here. Bernie Sanders launches 2020 presidential campaign. No longer an underdog. This is from uh, Nice Polite Republicans, also known as NPR. Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont is giving it another go, launching a second campaign for the White House four years after surprising Democrats with a strong bid for the party's 2016 nomination. We begin the political revolution in the 2016 campaign, and now it's time to move that revolution forward. Uh, But this 2020 bid will undoubtedly be a very different presidential campaign than his quest uh, as the underdog in 2016. Sanders enters the race with a top contender who, along with four... Wait, who are these people? (laughs) Everybody keeps mentioning Joe Biden is one of the top contenders. And it's like, where are they getting? First of all, he hasn't announced yet. Second of all, I don't know any, but like, where are these people excited for Joe Biden? Like, where are they? Where I don't see them on the blogosphere anywhere. And I'm not even saying that to, to, like, I don't entertain this fantasy that there aren't support for centrist candidates out there. I know there are centrists. We should call them what they are, conservative candidates. I know that people support Kamala Harris. I don't entertain some fantasy that that nobody out there supports her. People do because she has some cool T-shirts. Uh, <laughs> I know there's people out there that like Cory Booker. I know, but I haven't seen anyone that's like Joe Biden. That's the guy. Like I haven't seen it at all. And we're gonna go back to the chat in a little bit. Please let me know if you have. And and I'm just like I haven't seen anything about it, but. Every corporate media, they're like, yeah, he's one of the front runners. But according to what? According to people that that, that pick up their landline still, uh, that only watch cable news because they don't realize there's choices, and they respond to leading questions such as, Joe Biden will probably be president in 2020. Would you vote for him if that's the case? And they were like, uh, yeah, I guess I don't like Trump. Biden, front runner. <laughs> that's got to be how they conduct these things. Anyway, uh, back to this. All right. So, you know, him, uh, Sanders is a top contender, you know, according to everything that's out there on the blogosphere and everything else and the movement that he started building in 20. Well, he didn't start it, but he put gasoline on the fire big time. He, he, he lit a huge, he put a huge spark under the progressive movement. You know why? Because he made us realize we weren't alone. He made us realize there were a lot more of us than we realized. That's what Bernie Sanders did. And then Joe Biden, according to these uh, landline phone calls to people that get these leading bullshit questions. <laughs> I think that's the only way. It's a sharp contrast. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. In the years since his loss to Clinton, you know, where he was cheated, Sanders has remained a national leader of the Democratic Party, though he still refuses to join. <laughs> I love that. I really do. I think we have had real success in moving the ideology of the Democratic Party to be a pro-worker party to stand up to the billionaire class. Uh, We've got a long way to go. Very true. A very long way to go. And uh, it's a shame they're not 
already this. This is what they're supposed to already be. <laughs> but we all know they're not. Many of the issues he has promoted for years, most notably a Medicare for All national health care plan and a $15 hour minimum wage, have shifted from the party's fringe to its mainstream and are now seen as effective litmus tests for presidential candidates. Uh, indeed, Sanders' most recent Medicare for All bill was co-sponsored by uh, Kamala Harris, who has since distanced herself from it. Kristen Gillibrand, who will ask Wall Street's permission where she stands on that. Cory Booker, who will probably stab it in the, past, in the back first chance he gets, just like he did with the drug bill. And Elizabeth Warren, who has done some good things, some not-so-good things. And uh, most importantly, I don't think she would beat Trump. The Senate's other presidential candidate, okay, uh, Amy Klobuchar. By the way, man, how about that town hall? I, I didn't actually watch it. I just saw some of the segments from it, and, and I saw some of the, the, the quotes, the people. All she, she just got up there and said, we can't have nice stuff ever. No. Green New Deal sounds nice, but how are we going to afford that? Well, I don't know. How are we going to afford uh, our end, the end of our stay here on this planet, Amy? How are we going to afford that? And then the media spun it like she, she's not afraid to say no. She's not afraid to tell us we can't have what countries poorer than us take for granted. She's not afraid to do that. Like, what? Man, who was inspired by that? Apparently some people at CNN. That's it. People that work for CNN that know someone like her will protect their tax bracket. They're inspired by that. Yeah, way to tell us. Hey, guys, vote for me. Here's all the things I'm not going to do because we can't have it. Vote for me. Here's all. No, we can't. That should be her. That should be her. So here, this should just be her. I'm trying to cover up everything except for the word no on my shirt. That should just be her. Amy Klobuchar. No. We <laughs> I don't think so. Amy Klobuchar. That's what I think to her candidacy. No. No, thank you. Do you want a Green New Deal, Amy? No, thank you. Should we get Medicare for all? No, thank you. Should we get free college? No, thank you. Here's what I say to your candidacy then. No, thank you. No, thank you, Amy. So, all right, um, this article sucks, so let's move on anyway. But here's something I wanted to point out, because they're already smearing him. And, uh, you know, I realize I, here, we don't need the volume for this, because uh, it's not important. Uh, I realize this is not the most flattering image of Birdie that I happen to posit on. I apologize for that. Uh, but, you know, whatever. What are you going to do? Uh, I want us... It's like he's saying, like, Medicare for all. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can have it. Oh, watch me. Oh, watch me. And he's shaking his head. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's watch this. This is from the Huffington Post. And notice a lot of people not a fan. This is not a very good like to dislike ratio because they're already smearing him. They're already smearing him. All right. So this is Bernie Sanders. He's saying, I'm asking you to be part of an unprecedented grassroots campaign. Bernie is back. Oh, and by the way, they're playing like sad violin music. Senator Bernie Sanders has announced he is running for president again. Together, we can defeat Trump and repair the damage he has done to our country. Brothers and sisters, if we stand together, there is no limit to what we can accomplish. I hope you'll join me. So here we go. Sanders has recently fallen under scrutiny. Following reports of sexual harassment within his 2016 campaign team. There were also reports of harassment in the Clinton campaign. Not only did the Clinton campaign do absolutely nothing about it, they tried to silence those who were talking about it, and they promoted the person who was allegedly responsible. Let's get back to this. Multiple misconduct allegations were reportedly ignored by campaign staff. Sanders has since apologized. And he, he did. He said, hey, apparently this happened in our campaign. It's not okay. It's not appropriate. Look at the title of this, by the way. Bernie Sanders to run for president in 2020. And this is all they focused on. So he's saying this is not what any campaign should be about. He's reportedly looking to hire more people of color to ensure his 2020 effort. Leading up to Sanders' 2020 decision, a Vermont newspaper urged him not to run. That is an unfavorable opinion, especially among most Vermonters and progressives who support the platform that has come to define him. Part of the paper's biggest problem with Sanders is that he never talks to... Hold on. 
reporters from his home state. Instead, it says he favors national media and TV shows. The Times uh, also doesn't think Sanders could unite the Democratic Party. Rather, his 2020 run would split the vote, giving President Donald Trump a path to realize. So they're already smearing him. They're already Sanders age. There we go. There it is. 77 year old will almost be 80 by the time he runs for office. No one ever brings up Joe Biden's age. No one ever. And he'll be competing against younger, diverse candidates for the Democratic nomination. Except according to them, the front runner is Joe Biden. So there you have it. They're already smearing him in full force. And, and this will continue. They're going to do everything they can. The Democratic establishment. They're going to do everything they can to make sure neither Bernie Sanders nor Tulsi Gabbard makes it out of the primary. That's what they're going to do. Um, that's just the reality of what we're going to have to deal with. And again, I think the reason I want those two to pair up is because I think them as a joint ticket would be so big that they can't ignore it and they can't stifle it. It'll just be too big. There'll be too many people. They won't be able to stop it. The oligarchy won't be able to stop it. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Well, what do you guys think? Are you guys stoked? Are you inspired? Are you nervous? Are you... Are you uh, a little bit of everything? Are you a lot of bit of nothing? Statutory says, if the MSM wasn't smearing Bernie, I'd be afraid. That's a good point. Jason says, the frauds that are the DNC and HRC should all be charged under RICO. Shannon stoked. Darren says, if we don't have POTUS Sanders, VP Nina Turner, or Tulsi as uh, Secretary of State, then we will have lost. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be... <laughs> It's got to be one of them. Uh, and I, and I, I love Nina Turner. I don't know if she has any interest in jumping in. Um, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. I don't know. If she does, I'm stoked to hear from her. If she doesn't, I say wait until she's ready. Um, uh, Chris uh, also says Nina Turner is a better VP. She's no nonsense and has worked with Bernie closely since 2016. Does she have any interest in the gig, though? And maybe that's what she's holding out for. I, I don't know. Uh, Janai says, I'd love to see Bernie, Nina, and Tulsi as Secretary of State. Yeah, I'd take that. I would totally take that. Uh, Troxny's Refuge recommends Hillary Clinton as VP. Uh, if Bernie really wants to make sure he loses, that's a good idea. <laughs> Ron, we need to be ready for the DNC rigging. I agree. I agree. That's why we have to be so big they can't ignore us. That's why I say get the heaviest hitters, put them right next to each other. The propaganda will be bigly, <laughs> but Bernie is the OG of progressivism. That he's In electoral politics, he certainly is. And then other people are echoing, yeah, they never bring up the age uh, when it comes to Biden. They never bring up age when it comes to Biden. Uh, Darren says, I hope Lucy is ready for Bernie. Oh, she is. She's been ready. She has been ready. Lucy actually, um, most animals uh, support the Green Party uh, simply because it's, it's called the Green Party. So, you know, they, they kind of feel like, like that party has their best interests at heart. So most animals do support the Green Party, except for roaches uh, are libertarians. Uh, coyotes are mostly socialists. Uh, you know, because they travel in packs. And uh, Lucy's just kind of part of the revolution. She likes Bernie. She, she very much uh, does support Bernie. Um, yeah, and she's also, you know, Jill Stein fan. Uh, you know, she, she kind of... And Chet's mom brings up, aren't most animals colorblind? Yes, but still, they, <laughs> they support the Green Party. Susan brings about, uh, talks about how they only talk about Bernie's age. Well, before we get off the topic of the smears that are already out there, we're going to go to another uh, epic smear piece. Uh, and this one, wow, this is great. And Pam Ryan brings up the analogy, the exact same thing is happening to Corbyn in the UK, uh, which is very true. But Corbyn, because you guys have a more honest electoral system than we do in the United States, I'm not saying it's perfect. I know it isn't. 
but it's better than what we got in the United States. Because of that, Corbyn is making more strides uh, than Bernie Sanders is able to right now in the United States because you guys have a more honest process than we do. Not saying it's perfect. I know it's not. But compared to what we got, hell of a lot better. Damn it, there was a comment I wanted to bring up, and I, I can't. Oh, John also says, no one brings up Nancy Pelosi's age either. They only do it to Bernie. They only do it to Bernie. And that is true. That is true. Um, and somebody says, roaches have more policy ideas than Kamala Harris. That's probably true. Also, probably true. All right, guys. So, check this out. This is pretty... Uh, this is pretty interesting here. We're talking about some of the smears that are already out there. This is from uh, this is from Washington Times. Prominent pro Sanders subreddit Way of the Burn compared to foreign trolling operation. I know the margins are kind of fucked up on this article. Uh, something appears fishy with Way of the Burn, a prominent Reddit page dedicated to advancing the prospects of Bernie Sanders. This is the second largest Sanders fan page. Um, exposing its 24,000 members to the same pro-Moscow and American dissension stories associated with other fringe sites and suspect social media accounts. Say experts who have studied the page. Who are these experts? Gee, I don't know. I wonder if they tell us. I bet they don't. I consider it extremely suspicious, said Josh Russell, a prominent analyst on social media politics who tweets about it as Josh Emerson. Mr. Russell thinks... It's more likely that Way of the Burn is a false flag run by alt-right people than Russia, although he said the patterns of the post are quite similar. I don't think these people give a rat's ass about Bernie Sanders. This is designed to, design, to divide Democrats. Reddit is a massive online message board with more than a million forums or subreddits dedicated to it. All right, so they're telling us what Reddit is. So they're saying that this Bernie Sanders subreddit is eerily similar to Russian dif disinformation. It is either run... All right, so... I know the people involved with that subreddit. I know them. Uh, they're not Russian trolls. They're not alt-right. They're as far from alt-right as you can get. They're progressives. They're progressives who believe in the movement that Bernie really lit a fire under. And... A lot of them I met at uh, the Convergence Conference, which was the Convergence Conference to draft Bernie to start a new party. Because we saw the corruption of the Democratic Party as being too severe to fix, nor does it have any interest in being fixed. And decided that electorally, starting a brand new party, that the time was right for it. I believed that then, and I still do. However, it didn't happen. So now you're dealing with that reality that, okay, well, it didn't happen. I thought the time was right. I still do feel that way. Um, as far as 2020 goes, it's too late. It's too late now. We're not going to have a new party in this country anytime soon. Had Bernie said yes back then... We might be having a completely different conversation, but he didn't. So, you know, he can only coulda, woulda, shoulda so much. He didn't say yes. And no other prominent politician said yes either. And I do know that the Democratic Party will not get us out of this mess. It's going to take movements outside of electoral politics. And when we talk about this on the show, it's going to take strikes. It's going to take uh, unification in labor. It's going to take... Um, uh, protest. It's going to take task force. It's going to take local coalitions. All those things are outside of electoral politics, and all those things are absolutely necessary to move forward. And what is one of the bigger things in stifling those types of movements? When you smear progressives as reds, when you smear, when you give these McCarthyite smears to progressives who are just trying to foster a movement that this country needs. We didn't get the New Deal just because FDR felt like giving it to everybody. Just because he's like, I feel like being a nice guy. We got the New Deal because they were afraid. Because FDR had to go to his rich friends and be like, look, 
You're either going to give up a little bit or you're going to give up all of it because there's a big-ass labor movement in this country and they're pissed and they ain't going to take this shit anymore. So we're doing something and we're doing it quick. And he did. And no one said, how are we going to pay for that? Because they knew they were going to figure that part out. So that's what we're dealing with now. And for Bernie to make it out of a primary... For Bernie and or Tulsi to make it out of a primary, we have to have a movement so big that it can't be stifled, that it can't be ignored. That it shows up at the ballot box so big that it it just can't be, it can't be halted. And I do think that is possible, but just showing up to the ballot box alone is, is not anywhere close to enough it's going to take a lot more than that and even bernie sanders acknowledges that he's like look this has got to be this is a movement that we started he knows it's a movement he knows that it's bigger than him and he's the face of it whether he wanted to be or not i don't know if he really wanted i mean maybe maybe he didn't like i don't know i mean i'm assuming he did you know he did run for president and he's running again so, but the smears are going to come. They already have. They, I mean, no sooner had he announced that Huffington Post put that out. And again, the title is Bernie's running for president in 2020. And that's all they want to highlight. Hey, he's old. There were issues within his campaign. There were sexual harassment claims in his campaign. Uh, he's disconnected from people of color. All those smears they throw out there against Bernie. That's all they had to say about it. And you know what? I, I saw this ABC interview with uh, Bernie, and uh, I was just cheering at it because uh, the interviewer asked him, you know, Howard Schultz. And what the person wanted to do was they wanted to make sure Bernie wasn't going to divide the Democrats. There, there's that smear, too. He divides the Democrats, even though he basically de- gave the de- Democrats a winning platform, and they still stifle him, marginalize him, and ignore him anyway. And then they pretend to take up that platform. Isn't it interesting that all of the Democrats that want to be in the White House in 2020 try to mirror the guy that we were all told couldn't win? Isn't that interesting? I posted that on social media over a year ago, still relevant today. Isn't that fascinating? The guy that we were all told couldn't win? That's who all the 2020 candidates try to be like. Well, except for Amy. And Howard Schultz. They're trying to be there. They're, they're, we're going to tell you all the stuff you can't have. And neither of them are going to go anywhere. And uh, anyway, the ABC person asked Bernie. They were like, hey, you know, if someone else, uh, you know, Howard Schultz says he wouldn't run. He, he wouldn't run as an independent if the Democrats nominate a centrist. And I know what they wanted to ask. They were like, are you going to make sure that the Democratic Party is in unity? Will you not run as a centrist if you don't? Or excuse me, will you not run as an independent if you don't make it out of the primary? I know that was what they were trying to get at. You know, like asking Bernie, would he do this? Would he do that? Would he do? Um, And Bernie just cut the guy off. And he goes, well, isn't that nice of Howard Schultz? Hey, why are we listening to Howard Schultz? Why is Howard Schultz on all of your programs? Why is Howard Schultz given any time of day? I'll tell you why, because he's a billionaire. Bernie said it right to that plutocrat corporate media oligarch's face. And it was beautiful. And how backwards is it that we live in a country where certain politicians hold the media accountable and the media doesn't hold anyone accountable? How scary is that? Where we live in a country where politicians have to hold the media accountable and not the other way around. And it's because we have a corporate media structure that should be illegal. It shouldn't be legal for institutions that have no business being in news, that have nothing to do with news and information, to own and control the media. It should be labeled PR because that's what it is. MSNBC is not a news organization. It is a PR organization for Comcast. Fox News is just Rupert Murdoch's PR wet dream. CNN has no business. They they don't want to be in news. Jeff Zucker. I live in Los Angeles. 
CNN is just considered another outlet where you can pitch something not even news related. And they've had some great not news shows. Anthony Bourdain stuff. Really cool stuff. WKML Bell doing some really cool stuff. I mean, CNN has some great programs. It's not news. I mean, they're just another network. They just happen to have news in their name for some reason because they do, you know, they do bullshit propaganda, past office news for some of their programming. So you have three cable news organizations that aren't news at all and furthermore have no business being in news and information. It'd be fine if they were just networks and we had an actual news structure in this country. We don't. We just don't have a news structure. Talk to people from other countries that live here. Like, like talk to people. Like, like, just hear what they'll have to say. I mean, I, I've i mentioned this before on the show. There's a, a friend of my fiance. She's from Canada. Um, she's not a big news junkie, but she pays attention. You know, she's well-read, whatever. She says it. She's like, you guys, one of the things I noticed when I first moved here, you guys don't have news. Like, you just don't do that here. People from other countries will notice that about, like, to them, they see it because the general person that comes from a country that has an actual news structure, they see that. They're like, oh, you guys just don't have one. The United States just doesn't have a news structure. We don't. We don't. There's some great journalists that live here. And most of them have to find their own way via self-funding or something like that because there's no actual news structure to employ those types of people your only options are these corporate institutions that aren't really news and information and when your main priority is preserving the status quo the first thing you're going to do to a movement is try to stifle it and try to trivialize it and marginalize it that's what the corporate media has done to every single social movement in this country from the 60s until present day, probably even before the 60s. So I'm excited that Bernie Sanders announced, but uh, we've got a long road ahead. And Bernie knows it. He said it himself. That's actually pretty much verbatim something he said earlier today. And uh, it's going to take everything. It's going to take everything. It's going to take movements. It's going to take strikes. It's going to take task force. It's going to take coalitions. It's going to take uh, alliances that involve activism, that involve issue-based task force, that involve people running for office at the local level. It's going to take all of that if we want to see someone like Bernie Sanders in the White House. And... Uh, I think that the progressive powerhouses need to team up the best way that they can because otherwise, I mean, the establishment's going to do everything they can to make sure uh, that neither of them, Bernie, Tulsi, and if anyone else throws their hat in the ring, them too, don't make it out of a primary. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron, don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news.